thanks very much, everybody. I think you can hear me hopefully loud and clear. Um, now I'm just going to put it onto show presenter view. So, yeah, as uh, GG said, my name is Ian Morgan, um, and I work in the Cyber Services Division for Services Australia, based here in freezing Canberra. It was this morning at minus six. So <laughs> it was a bit of a fresh one today. Um, now I'd like to just take a moment to tell you a little bit about what we are and what we do. So, next slide. So I think you might have heard of Services Australia because we're responsible for Centrelink, Medicare and Child Support Services. Uh, the Cyber Services Division makes sure that the agency's networks and records are kept secure. So we manage over $170 billion of payments to almost 25 million customers. Uh, so as you might expect, we are a high profile uh, target for attackers. So that means we need some very intelligent, highly trained and motivated people to keep an eye on things 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. So the Cyber Services Division has around 200 people working there. Um, many different areas and backgrounds. I'm a, a communications uh, graduate, so that's my role here. Um, so we're not all made of IT experts. Most of our staff do have backgrounds in IT, including networking, programming and so on. We also have other professionals working in our divisions ranging from business, communication like me, uh, finance and law. Each of these different skill sets um, covers a range, a huge role of responsibilities that exist in the cyber security environment. This means that people are still able to do it, yeah, but it's basically do that. Uh, however, not, not all the skills we're uh, talking about are taught in the classroom. Some skills that you might need are. So we've got problem solving, strategic thinking, planning, communication, resource management, creativity, investigation, and a whole lot of patience uh, when you're dealing with some very clever attackers. Now, let's just see. So I'm having a slight internet issues, but that's all right. Now, do we have some gamers here? Um, I'm assuming many of you connect to the internet and play multiplayer, etc. Um, if you do consoles, uh, online. So there are many ways that would attempt to engineer. Some of it can be done actively and directly. Some of them are passively and indirectly. An example of a direct social engineering attempt would be someone sending you an email that might have a link to a fake but genuine looking website or an attachment that uh, with some sort of malware. This is known as phishing. Uh, phishing usually involves a cyber criminal sending a malicious email to a large group of recipients hoping one will click the link or open the attachment. The link goes to a fake website where you might attempt to log in and give away your username and password. The website might be infected, an email attachment might have some of your malware or virus that can hold your machine to ransom or track whatever you're typing, such as login details or personal messages. An attacker might send this kind of email to a specific individuals, usually someone high profile or in a position of authority or influence. The email might be better crafted to look legitimate. This is known as spear phishing. These pages might have stuff like tag a friend memes or quizzes that might get you to answer certain questions about yourself. The questions are designed to get you to share information that might give cyber criminals enough information that they can use later on. This isn't designed to make you paranoid or anxious online, but is intended to make you conscious and think about what you do online and to ask the question about whether or not the things that you do online are nice and safe and secure. So on to the news everybody knows about. COVID-19 has made the many cyber threats much worse. Um, as you can see from a little graph here, just hopefully you can see here, a huge spike of, uh, of threats and a huge spike of delivery up 23% from 2019 for scams. So um, last year and this year has been a huge, a huge, uh, a huge year for us basically and uh, for many cyber organizations across the country and the world. So the most uh, successful scams are done via phone calls and emails, with phone calls pro um, proving to have the most cut through and monetary gain for cyber criminals. The huge rise in phishing scams, up 75%, as I mentioned from 2019, is perhaps the most concerning st stat of all in terms of sheer volume. Um, there's also been, I think you might have heard on the news, perhaps vaccination scams. So, Scamwatch is aware of a number of scams relating to COVID 19 vaccines. 
both in Australia and overseas. These include requesting payment for vaccines or for early access to vaccines, offers to mail vaccines and offers to pay money as an investment opportunity in Pfizer or AstraZeneca or something like that. And also some fake surveys have been getting around um, relating to vaccines offer prizes or, or early access, uh, which we're well, about, we're well aware of. So, uh, scammers are pretending to be from real and well-known businesses such as banks, travel agents, insurance providers and telco companies, and using various excuses around COVID-19 to ask for your personal information and financial information, lure you into opening malicious links or attachments, just like this one from uh, Westpac, Westpac, and gain remote access to your computer uh, to seek payments for a fake service or something you did not purchase. So, which relies to, you know, uh, the skills expo now, a huge skills shortage in uh, cybersecurity all across the country. So, as everything is going digital, um, 20,000 people need to be trained and recruited in the next few years. So, a oh, very high demand. Uh, a number of leaders in the cybersecurity industry are saying that there is a skills shortage which is expected to last for a, a really long time. Uh, some experts have even said that in Australia alone, up to 20,000 people, as I said, need to be trained and recruit recruited in the next few years. With the rise of malicious threats in the digital world and with the internet in interconnected devices, the need for talented and motivated cybersecurity workers is very high. This demand will be very high well into the foreseeable future. That being said, there's also room for people who are interested in cybersecurity, even if they haven't had any experience or formal training, uh, which is myself actually. I've come from a communications and um, political science background, so you don't necessarily need to be a coder, as the previous pre presenter said as well. Uh, all different kinds of businesses have a cybersecurity need in one form or another. Uh, most businesses deal with information, including a customer database or other confidential records. All companies work with money. Some perform large financial transactions. Other organisations manage expensive or difficult to replace items. In some instances, a celebrity or a politician's reputation or image can be an important asset. All of these things are very attractive to cyber criminals. They will try to cause damage for all different reasons. So it might be just for financial gain, political reasons, or just to see if they can, which is often the younger what younger people do. These companies want to make sure that their work and information remains secure at all times. They should realise that they could be targeted at any time. As a result, businesses are becoming more aware of cybersecurity and uh, rightfully investing in it. So, one way this issue is being addressed has been the improvement of STEM education in schools and then offering pathways into tertiary study. Employers are beginning to recognise the value in hiring people who are new to the industry. Um, one important thing to remember is that cybersecurity is, that is, is in high demand and it's not something that will disappear in the future. So when you think about looking to future proof type jobs that are you know, going to be still be around in 20 years, 20, 30 years, cybersecurity will certainly be one of those. Um, also, the, the pay, the salary is also very good, generally speaking. Um, as we discussed earlier, cyber security is a very broad industry. It's not limited to people with skills necessarily in IT and technology. In order for any business to run well, it will need to be organised. You need people who are good at managing records and information, especially in government. Uh, you need people who are able to talk to the public, uh, such as I'm doing today. And you need people who are good at writing important documents and people who can manage your finances. In a lot of instances, even people with extensive IT experience will still need to learn some, some new things on the job. Don't expect that you know everything before you start. All you really need is an interest, a willingness to learn and a good work ethic. And you're well on your way to becoming part of the cybersecurity community. And there's my boss bringing me a coffee. Thank you, George. Now, Pathways into Services Australia. So just a little bit from my personal um, background, I joined in 2011, so I'm coming up to 10 years um, as a graduate. I had actually had a journalism and political science background. So I've kind of moved around different places within Services Australia. So um, at the moment I'm in cyber services, which I'm really happy with. So as you can see, education through university, you've got graduate programs, cadetships and apprenticeships. So if you're interested in cybersecurity as a career, there are a number of ways to get started. Um, as I said, speak to a subject or career counsellor at school, university or TAFE. Many organisations offer graduate programs uh, and graduates are able to start work and use their newly um, learned skills in a workplace environment, which is what I did back in 2011. 
Um, we also have cadetships and apprenticeships. So with a cadetship, you'll need to have already started university in a technical field. The cadetship then allows you to study and work at the same time, in most cases part time. An apprenticeship is slightly different where you become a full time employee and you'll be enrolled in a certificate level course. So you're kind of studying and um, you know, working at the same time, which is a really good mix for a lot of people. So you attend classes one or, or two days a week as part of your employment for two years. To be eligible for the apprenticeship program, you'll only have to have completed year 12. Please note that with the apprenticeship and a cadetship program, you don't apply directly to a department, but for the program itself. So you then have the opportunity to meet with different departments in an interview setting. If you're successful in getting into the program, you'll be matched to a suitable area. Um, this means that you may, may not necessarily go straight into a cybersecurity, but you'll have the opportunity to work for the Australian government, which is one of the entry pathways I had. Um, the Australian government provides many opportunities for work and you can still pursue cybersecurity as a career. If you would like to find out more, please visit us at a booth, which is unfortunately you can't do today because we're virtual, but um, yeah. Now, just in wrapping things up, uh, I'd like to re reiterate a few things. Uh, the first thing is that we spend a lot of time online. I would invite you to reflect on how much time you actually spend online. I think the internet is a fantastic resource. I would remind you that there are many hazards that exist there. The more time that we spend online, the more risk can we, the more risks that basically present themselves. It's important we learn to protect ourselves online. Secondly, I want to say again, cybersecurity is a really good in industry to get into. Um, me personally, I've found it much more rewarding than the other areas I've been in with Services Australia. Um, as mentioned previously, it's an industry that's very future proof because of our low work lives becoming increasingly digital. Cybersecurity is a very exciting and rewarding career. It never gets boring and there are always challenges and opportunities for growth. So I'd like to hand it up for questions if I can, please. Yeah. We have a few questions here for you. Um, does your service have any diversity plans in place to protect the gender equality? We do indeed. So yeah, government's one of the four front leaders of that. Um, especially we have what was called women in executive level positions. Um, so I'm acting executive level one at the moment, which is it's called EL1. I graduated as an APS5 and then you go to APS6 and then go to the EELS. Um, and so we have a very big program of um, women and other kind of minority type uh, you know, people from cold backgrounds um, getting into those more executive level positions. Um, and especially women getting into executive level positions has been a big, a big target as well. But basically in my, in my um, experience, if you good at your job and you know you're, you're doing everything you properly the the promotions and things kind of take care of themselves so yeah hopefully um, answered that correctly yeah um here's a, here's a little question that i think it's pretty interesting do you do you play games and if so has that helped you with your job i am a bit of a gamer um since i've had a child fairly recently i've had to take a backward step but um Look, in my in my job as a communications person, um, not hugely, but there's a lot of gamers here that do the coders, things like that. Um, yeah, so yes and no, but I, I do enjoy playing games for sure. My, my PlayStation 4 occasionally gets a bit of a rollout. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, do you have any work experience opportunities for Year 10? or probably high school students? So our best one for year 10s um, would probably be looking at um, an apprenticeship, which is what I mentioned before. So that's where you kind of um, can say study it um, in Canberra, it's called CIT, but in other states it's usually TAFE. So study like a TAFE course, like cybersecurity, for instance, at TAFE. And then you would be an apprentice at the same time. So you'd be also earning and learning, which is a great combination for many people. So. If you're, if you're in year 10 and not sure if maybe college is right for you necessarily next year or not sure what you do, you, if you're not sure what you want to do, um, the apprenticeships which is run through the DTA is a really good option there. Um, you can earn and learn, which is a great combination for people. Yeah. Um, there's another question. How did you get um, this job and what inspired you to get this job? 
So I was one of those people that studied journalism at university and then really struggled to get uh, any kind of work and unfortunately coming out of just because journalism's had a huge big shake up with the internet and um, kind of the way that the payments you know, system, people aren't paying for their news basically anymore. Um, so I found it very difficult to get any work. So I just saw online one time that um, there were some graduate programs in Canberra for a whole, and I applied for, I think, for three different um, departments at the time. So I applied for um, Department of Clean Energy, uh, which I think has changed its name since. I also um, applied for Department of Finance and I applied for, um, was the, back then it was called Department of Human Services, which is now Services Australia. So um, basically applied for all those. You, you have to apply within two years, I think it is. They might have changed the rule there. After um, graduating, you need a credit um, minimum of a credit level. Um, I just I think I just snuck into a distinction for me, so I was I was there on that one. And from there, basically, there's about three interviews, and then I got the letter saying you're off to Canberra. So, yeah, that was basically how I got into uh, became a graduate with the Services Australia, and since then haven't really looked back. I've really enjoyed it. That's pretty interesting. Yeah. yeah. Here's another question. Can you describe cyberbullying within social media? Cyberbullying. Yeah. I think we know all know. Um, you know, we've we've seen basically trolling and people saying awful things via messenger. Um, it's it's a really horrible thing. I'm I'm kind of old enough, luckily, to have kind of escaped that a little bit. There was no Facebook around when I was at high school or, or college. It was just coming up to, um, we were just starting with, what was the original one back in the day? Um, MySpace. MySpace was just getting going when I was around. But, um, but we've got any any sort of cyberbullying within the workplace here will be stamped out really, really quickly. Like it's completely unacceptable. Um, yeah, it, it's it's viewed the same as any form of other harassment within the workplace, and that is, you know, we don't accept any name calling, you know, or anything like that here. Um, and it's kind of the cyberbullying is kind of treated a little bit the same. Like it's completely unacceptable. You'll be pulled in line for it. You may even, you know, um, if it's really serious, you may even get um, fired. You know, lose your job or demoted in case of government, which is often excuse me, how things work. Um, yeah, basically, short, cut a short story, uh, long story short, it's just not acceptable in the, in the government at all. Yeah, um, here's two really similar questions. Have you ever fell victim to a cyber attack or have you ever been hacked or gotten your information leaked? I actually have. Um, it's just really, it's a funny one. Um, my internet at my mother's house down in Tasmania was playing up really badly, and I'm, I think it was just a bit of a uh, coincidence. But basically, I got a, a phone call, which I mentioned in the in my um, presentation. That's that's still one of the the biggest ways that we you know have uh, people get scammed is by by calling up. And he said, "Look, I'm from Telstra, and I've noticed that your internet's been playing up lately." I was like, "Well, it has actually. That's correct." But uh, then he started looking for basically to get remote access and that basically set off some alarm bells to say well, well hang on here um is it all right if i call you back but by on your line of course said no 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 i'm you know why would you want to do that i'm from telstra i'm here to help and i said oh, I'll, I'll give you a call back and and hung up and and actually called telstra back and said no look, we never would, would never call you like that and we would never get try and get remote access to your computer like that so it was um it was just a full on scam, which happened to coincide with the internet kind of playing up, which was kind of made me a little bit more, I guess, susceptible to the scam, if that makes sense, that he kind of mentioned that my internet was not working. I don't know if he knew that or what, but um, that kind of opened the door a little bit. But it was then that I, uh, once he said, just download this program for me to get just remote access kind of thing, I was like, oh, you know, hold up. Um, I don't think I, I don't think I want you. <laughs> having remote <laughs> access to my computer. So uh, that was the only time I've ever got any kind of scam like that. We do test um, in cyber services. Actually, it's a just to join on from that. We do test from time to time um, 
send out little uh, emails with little attachments that are it's basically scam and they'll they'll like make a registry to say these people <laughs> it's a bit of a name and shame but they clicked on the attachment that they shouldn't have like so we kind of test people to uh to make sure they're doing the right thing so we even have little you'd almost call it phishing in a way like little uh phishing attempts that uh look to make sure that everybody in the because we got nearly 30,000 people in the department so we want to make sure everybody's doing the right thing in terms of uh keeping safe online and keeping the department safe online so yeah 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 it's unfortunate with your with your um, information leaked well not really information leaked. yeah well it, yeah. it could have been yeah so. yeah um we have a few more questions sure. um if yeah, you yes. wanted to work if you if one wanted to work for cyber services would they have to be based in canberra no so most of our people are based in canberra just because it makes it much more easier probably kind of guessing a little bit, but I'd say around 80% of Cyber Services Division is based in Canberra. But we also have a number of BAs. So I think Jess mentioned before the business analysts and other people like that. Uh, we've got a few, a bit of a team down in Melbourne um, and one up in Brisbane also. But yeah, you'd have to, if you were going to join the graduate program as I did, you'd have to be prepared to move um, to Canberra. And there, from there on, you can try and make other arrangements, but you know, Canberra is where the capital is, and that's where most of the that's where most of the public servants are that that run all the infrastructure. So, How can unfortunately, you yeah, it comes yeah. with minus six degree mornings. Sorry, guys. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's unfortunate. Yeah. Um, here's another question: um, Hacking or scammers has increased a lot lately. Um, how do you protect every individual? Really good question. So I just take general um, approaches to that. Always make sure that your um, anti uh, your security, your, your anti malware, those kind of things is up to date. Your cyber security, your Nortons, those kind of things, the, the whole different range of programs that you can use. Norton's a good one. Um, your antivirus protection, first and foremost, make sure that's always up to date. Secondly, there's a lot of scams. I think I mentioned in one of the slides there that uh, social media is growing more and more scams. So if you get a friend request from a person that you've never known before or it looks a little bit sus, don't even accept on Facebook those friend requests. Just can get rid of them always. Those surveys and things that pop up on your newsfeed, don't click them either. Um, so just take very, um, I guess it's, you know, um, a common common sense approach to cybersecurity is just not anything that looks a little bit sus from a person that you don't know, some email that comes through, never click the link. Um, yeah, always. And like I said, make sure your, your cybersecurity, your anti-malware and your antivirus protection is up to date. Um, and that's really all that you can do, unfortunately. There's a lot of people out to get you, but just try and be one step ahead of them, basically, is all you can do. Yeah. Um I think we have time for one final question. Yeah. Um, what does your day to day look like at Services Australia? So really good question. So being in more of a communications type um, environment, my kind of biggest role at the moment is um, we're introducing multi-factor authentication to the entire um, department. So sounds sounds easy, but when you're dealing with 30,000 people, it's actually quite hard. So I don't know if people are familiar with multi-authentication. That's basically when you go when you do online banking and you'll get like a passcode from your mobile or something like that. We're introducing a, a similar thing here just to increase our security um, within the department. So I'm doing lots of kind of emails and meetings like that about my MFA. I might be then the next day I might be at a school doing an expo or um, or even an online one like this. So uh, with the thing I love about my most recent role is that there's a lot of different variety and I'm kind of not always stuck in the office, which I really love. Like I'm not a a nine to five office, you know, five days a week. That's that's not really my my cup of tea. So what I really love about this job is, yes, I'm in the office, you know, most of the day, but I'm also in and out doing other bits and pieces as well. So um, yeah, so lots of, kind of put it in a nutshell, lots of kind of um, emails and things like that to make sure everything's the whole project's on track for MFA or whatever other jobs come in. 
and then other bits and pieces with my um, kind of community, what we call community engagement work, which is more stuff like this. Yeah, so good, good variety. Yeah. Thank you, Ian, for your insights and sharing your experience for our IT careers. Yeah. Not a problem at all.